I'm David Miller, and I was the senior editor of the AIHA Green Book, uh, both editions. Um, and I've been offered a few minutes to tell you about what's really different about the, the second edition. And, and I've subtitled this 12 Years of Progress. Um, as most people operating today would probably not remember that when the AIHA uh, Green Book first edition uh, was completed in December of 2007, there was still a lot of people who said that this too much effort was being put on mold and dampness, it wasn't such a big deal. Um, uh, and compared to 1996, when the first uh, edition of the AIHA field guide appeared with some leadership, important leadership on mold and dampness, uh, uh, there was an, an enormous amount of controversy. And I've always been very proud of the fact that AIHA basically led uh, this aspect of public health for a long time. And, I, and, and so I've subtitled this uh, 12 Years of Progress. And as I was preparing for this, I got uh, one of the missives from the EPA um, talking about, uh, well, water and, and air quality and, 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 uh, and in particular mold. So it, it seems that although we're uh, really wrapped up in COVID at the present time, um, there, there can be no doubt that mold and dampness remain a, a substantive problem for both our residential housing stock and actually far too commonly for public buildings, although that is much improved over the past uh, uh, couple of decades. Um, I also wanted to, to flag that the, the, the second edition is, is dedicated to the late Phil Mori, who was, as I'm sure all of you know, um, uh, a stalwart uh, a contributor to, the, um, to not only this field, but to the AIHA. Uh, in general, and much of the sort of vision that he um, he um, he developed from when I first met him, which was in 1986, I'd like to say, um, still stands as as critically important uh, to this field. So I mentioned 12 years of progress. Uh, back in 2007, the ASHRAE was still not sure that maybe mold could be something that was there a problem or indeed some, some components of the ASHRAE world uh, might actually be making some things worse. And so it was a considerable uh, change in my in judgment in, in 2012 when ASHRAE adopted this position statement on mold and dampness. Um, it was renewed, it's my understanding that's being worked on again. And, uh, and, and it was a big step forward and, and, and the changes that they underwent are reflected in the second edition of the Green Book. And probably the most important in any practical way um, um, sort of landscape shift was the recognition by the allergy community that mold was the thing. Um, that community had, uh, had challenges and uh, accepting that for a very long time. Uh, some of the leaders of the mold aren't a problem, isn't a problem issue came from that community. Um, but with a series of, of uh, clinical practice parameters on environmental allergens, ending up with this material on, on fun, fungi and fungal um, health issues, um, there, there has been a, a, a sea change that that not just public health, not just occupational hygiene, but physicians are generally now understanding that this is an important thing. And, I, and, and so I also wanna flag it because as part of this process, um, there was some rather specific guidance on what physicians need in terms of building inspections. And too often they would receive reports that have been done by um, uh, people who would investigate buildings of various qualifications that actually weren't very useful to a physician. And so there's some pretty uh, good guidance, I think, on what the physicians feel they should see if we're gonna give them a report. And that's both of the ASHRAE information and, the, and this quad AI material is reflected in, in the ultimate uh, product of the Green Book. 
So I'll, I'll now just very briefly go over the parts I, I really would like to highlight as, as new and, and why if you have the first edition, you really should be buying a second edition if you haven't. And, and there are a number of sections that are very different. And among the most different is the section on health. Um, and, and again, keeping to certainly my ish, uh, interest to keep AIHA consonant with, with um, other allied health professionals, um, the main part of this chapter was written by Dr. Mark Mandel, um, um, who is the leading mold epidemiologist really in the world on the WHO committee that dealt with mold, um, uh, former NIOSH, former uh, Livermore Lab employee, and now with the California Department of Health. So anchoring right in to the state of the art and the cognizant authorities uh, that I mentioned. And the, the medical part of it was, was I'm, I'm very proud to say, was written by Dr. Jay Portnoy, who is uh, probably among the most significant leading um, academic allergists in the United States and globally. And it was him who led the practice parameters on environmental allergens and also the material on mold and dampness. And he has published rather extensively on this. So all of this material has been completely brought in line with current best practice. And, and again, part of my interest is always to make sure that industrial hygienists are, are not, uh, are, ma are, are made aware of where everybody else is uh, and to make sure that they're, when they make a decision or God forbid have to testify that they're, they're doing so in a way that won't easily be challenged. Um, uh, another really large change in the, in the document is the, uh, a formidable update of the guidances that exist in, in 2019 uh, to the end of 2019. And this was done by the, by Ling Ling Hung and Jack Springston very carefully, uh, building on what had been done before, mainly by Laura Cobe of the EPA. Um, and, and, you know, as all of you know, the practicing industrial hygienists, it is quite important to be aware of guidances that may apply in particular jurisdictions um, uh, so that you're, you know, if you work in those, a new jurisdiction, you're going to know what the rules of the road are. Another really large change, at least in terms of names, is in the mold ecology section, which still I think remains very good. Um, and, and why do we care about this? And that is because um, uh, different fungi will grow um, on building materials, different building materials, and they'll grow at different water activities. So all of you know who deal with this, that it takes water saturated cellulosic material to grow Stachybotrys and, and Catonium globosum. And probably most of you know that sir, there are some pretty uh, low water activity fungi like Eurotium or now called Aspergillus uh, herbariorum um, that you might find behind vinyl wallpaper or on some building materials that have been affected just by moisture rather than frank water. So uh, unfortunately for most of us, the names of most of these fungi have been changed since 2007. And um, uh, Professor James Scott at U of T uh, uh, took a huge effort to, to put the correct names in the, in the second edition as they are current um, uh, to again, keep the document uh, serving us well into the, into the next decade or so. Um, the, the material on building science will still look familiar, uh, but of course there have been things learned in 12 years. Um, and so all of this was brought up to the current best practice uh, 
you know, thinking about changes that have occurred in buildings and HVAC systems since 2007. Um, and Steve Caulfield uh, showed a great deal of leadership in, in, in making that happen, along with the, uh, the team of other authors and reviewers. Um, as all of you who know me know that I've been saying for, for 30 years that the first and most important thing you should do when you're doing a dampness and mold investigation is do a very careful building inspection, what I call an informed inspection. Um, much of that is, is will look rather similar. Um, the material around um, uh, single family um, uh, residences in particular was, was much improved with new uh, diagrams and new uh, updated material. Um, material on the schools was reviewed and updated quite a bit. Um, and then um, missing really from the first edition was uh, really thorough sections on hospitals. And so this material was worked on by Erica Stewart and others from, from the community of specialists dealing with contamination of hospitals. And I guess part of my rationale for bringing this back into the document is, is that some of us may uh, be dealing with, a, for example, a physician's office or a clinic in a commercial building. And some of the guidances that apply to hospitals and, 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 the, and their particular uh, features of investigating a hospital can apply in that, uh, in that circumstance. Um, uh, the rest of the material is, again, this, uh, for uh, some considerable time, we placed a lot of, uh, uh, of uh, priority on pro good documentation, but there are some uh, changes in the technologies that are available to do that well. And so this is added and discussed in the, in the and plus all of this other material was brought up to uh, current best practice. Um, so uh, there is a lot, of course, on sampling. And, and my bias about sampling is, firstly, I've already declared one. Please inspect the building before you start doing that. Don't go in there and sample. But the second bias is that if you're going to sample, uh, please do it properly, because otherwise you're just wasting clients' money, uh, producing information that a physician can't use, um, uh, or worse, uh, cause sowing confusion. So th there are a number of new um, uh, technologies that have emerged perhaps more fully since uh, 2007. Uh, probably notably um, uh, the, the um, uh, method that isn't really used yet in industrial hygiene, but will probably become so in the next years. And that's high throughput DNA sequencing. So you could think of that as like CSI fungi, you get samples, the uh, sequencing, which is very, very cheap now, uh, will, will give a, a perhaps a very holistic picture of what is there, but there are limitations and uncertainties. So it has a particular use and I predict it will have some uses in the future, uh, but not just to bring that up as a topic. And, and, and then I would also note that the um, limitations of DNA diagnostics, diagnostics have been, let's just say, expanded since 2007. So there's discussion about this. Um, um, there are some discussions about mycotoxins, mostly around the fact that the methods that people sell um, really have very little value. Um, and I, I do want to flag beta 13 d glucan. Um, uh, beta 13 d glucan is, is probably the most important metric, uh, quantitative metric of damp building fungi uh, used in a research study. Um, and so it's included for that reason. And it, it's not impossible that in the next years, it will become a more common tool in uh, building investigations and to that end, in the um, current um, effort to update the AIH, ACGH bioaerosols book from 1999, um, the chemical aspects will be discussed 
in more detail from a health perspective. Um, and then the different building types, much of that is rather similar, uh, all updated, of course, but again, healthcare facilities have been brought into the mix for the reasons that I've identified. So what I've tried to do is give you a, a quick view on where the major changes are and what, why they happened and what I would hope you would look for in the book. Um, and, uh, and I hope that you would find that it, it will be useful like the previous one was for, for nearly a dozen years. Um, now I wanted to add uh, two other things. Um, building on the uh, completion of the IHA Green Book, um, the committees uh, developed uh, new fact sheets. Um, um, the facts about mold for uh, professionals, which is what I'm showing on the screen, that is new. And so it was, it was, it, it's an attempt to uh, tell IAQ investigators, physicians, and engineers roughly how AIHA materials can, can be helpful and how they all line up. Um, and so that's a new piece of work product from the facts about mold that were first generated, the first version in 2002. Uh, and then the facts about mold from a consumer perspective were updated, uh, but, but something else was done. And that is that an effort was made to uh, understand what questions um, uh, are commonly asked of, of, uh, of industrial hygienists and IAQ um, investigators and, um, and make sure that those questions were addressed. So all of us can you know, say we could write effects about mold but I guess what I was interested to make sure uh, with the team that uh, uh, worked on this led by Sherry Marsham is, is, is let's make sure we're answering the questions that, that you know, the folks on the street uh, might have. And, and to that end, we got some very good help from Kevin Kennedy at uh, Children's Mercy, who uh, teaches a lot in, the, in, the, in terms of uh, home inspections and and very active in, in hospital-based inspection programs of, of allergy asthma sufferers. Uh, and also I would flag Jack Springston was, uh, had many good suggestions about what he hears from clients. And then lastly, um, um, after again, a considerable effort led by, by Sherry Marsham and, and with a lot of help from AIHA headquarters, um, a series of really, I think, good videos on mold and dampness. Uh, and again, illustrating how AIHA members uh, can, uh, qualified AIHA members can, can help a homeowner or a building owner, um, uh, you know, address a mold and dampness problem in their, in, uh, you know, whatever it may be. Um, and I've personally received very, very positive feedback on them from uh, of, uh, communities all over the United States and Canada. So I think that there, it, you know, it, that, that it's been another good effort to market uh, the very good materials that AIHA makes in this area. But again, the reason I brought all these two work products up um, is because they are consistent with the, um, with the um, uh, material that's in the green book that so you basically everything reads across the modern materials the feed the AIHA produces on mold but it's also consistent largely with the uh, second edition of the field guide um, uh, uh, you know from some years ago so with that I'd like to thank you for listening and and you know, there will be people around the the committees who might be able to answer questions at Bling Ling Hung in particular, um, uh, Sherry Marsham. Uh, and, um, and, um, and again, if, if there's something highly technical, then please don't, don't hesitate to reach out uh, to me.